Are we live now? There yes. we are. We're live. Are we okay? One second. Okay. Hey, we're good. Yes. We're all good? Perfect. Perfect. Well, all thanks right. for your Say hi to everybody, Claudia. <laughs> Welcome back again. Okay, thank you. Bye. Um, bye. There we go. Uh, is that good? Yep. No, it's not. So let us know if that's good for you, everybody. Hi, Lori. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Text us and tell if us we're okay that now, that all of the viewing is good. Douglas is watching. He should be here because he knows everything. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Douglas is working from the back. Hello, everybody. So we really have to apologize again. We had some little technical issue. We are all learning. Hallelujah. We're just going to wait for a little bit of people to come in. Thank you, Jesus. Today is going to be good, 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 good. Welcome, Lori Martin. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, everybody. All right. It's getting there. So hope everybody had a good week. Welcome, Manzi. Welcome. Do you want to put one song so we can yep. just listen to it? We're just going to enter into the mood of, of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Welcome our pastor, Pastor Jean Baptiste. Good to see all of you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think Jesus sang this song first, Take Me Into the Holy of Holies. Take me past the outer courts Hallelujah. into the holy place. Come on, let's worship. Just take one minute just to worship. Hallelujah. We want to see your face today, God. We want the eyes of our understanding to be open through this Bible study. Welcome, welcome, Min. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take us into the Holy of Holies by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome. Please don't forget to share. Just hit that button, share, so we can have as many people be taught, be enlightened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, Ines. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Jesus. We want to see your face. We want to see your face. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hallelujah. Take us into the Holy of Holies. Take us in by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise. We give you praise, we give you praise for today. Don't forget to share. Welcome, welcome, First One family all over the world. Welcome, Facebook family. We are here to our Wednesday Bible study once again. Last week we were blessed. Uh, we were blessed by the teaching of Minister Kerry Mackey, an amazing teacher of the Word of God. Today we're going to continue. It's going to be beautiful, powerful, amazing. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Praise the Lord. 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 I'm just going to put on my microphone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, everlasting King. We thank you. You alone, God. Mm -hmm. 
are the reason of our existence. We worship you today and we welcome every viewer, every person listening to this word today, that they may be touched, that they may be empowered, that they may know you more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The revelation of your word, God, brings understanding. We thank you that today your word will be revealed to us. We thank you, Father, that we know that it's not by might. It is not by power, but it is by your spirit. The spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of might. We thank you because you are here with us to speak to our hearts today. We thank you, Lord. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Agnes. It is good to see all of you. I can see you people. We are blessed. We are in a season where the word of God is being ministered more than ever, where we are receiving the word of God more than we ever had, which is so good. Hallelujah. When the Bible says that everything turned together for good for those who, who love me and who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see that every situation that comes in our lives, God has a way, whether good, bad, ugly, or confusing, has a way to turn it good for our Absolutely. good. Even in this season of uh, coronavirus, you can see how uh, God is using this situation uh, to turn certain things around for his people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I pray that God, you can perceive and see what God is doing. Welcome, welcome. Mm -hmm. It's good to have you. Welcome, Aline. Mm -hmm. God is turning everything for our good. Mm -hmm. Number one, I mean, we have to learn how to use technology. God <laughs> is shifting the church <laughs> from beyond the four walls, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. And even those yeah. who don't want to go live, they don't have a choice. That's like right. me, yeah. I don't like to go live. Mm -hmm. But because the word of God has to be preached. Yeah. So we got to go past our comfort zone Absolutely. hallelujah at the end of the day welcome aline it's not about us no it's about the no. kingdom of god advancing Absolutely. it's about the work of god advancing so it, it, it is beautiful in my sight when i start perceiving it the way god sees it mm -hmm. so welcome Absolutely. welcome so we have uh kerry mackie today I would like you share to us where you're going to minister to us mm -hmm. with the, the Bible verse that you're going to start with. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Be ready. We're going to start off with John chapter 12, verse 27. Uh -huh. And before I do, you know, we just prayed about the spirit of mm -hmm. wisdom and revelation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are together surrendering to the spirit of mm -hmm. revelation. Because it's only by the spirit of revelation that we can speak to you at all. Mm. And so we're surrendering mm. to the Holy Spirit for your cause, for our cause. If we're called by his name, and if all things work together for us, for the purpose of God, you and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't God's purpose. That's right. And because it is God's purpose, let's take advantage of everything that we possibly can in him as it's ours. So we're looking at Jesus, you know, and... Verse 27 in John chapter 12, it says, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very hour that I came. The reason that he came was for the hour that evil was about to reign. Mm. And he was going to walk through it, conquering what ailed us. This is the purpose of God. Mm -hmm. The purpose of God... From the ancient path, God decided that Jesus was the lamb that was slain. Peter said the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. That's right. If you can imagine that God's plan for you, his thoughts and his plans were for you, were before the foundation of the world, then we should come and walk in these ancient paths because it says there's rest for our souls mm. in it. Amen. Jesus, imagine how humble Jesus is. <laughs> The hum Jesus walked so humbly that, again, he gave his own life. Before he gave his life on the cross, he gave his life to the Father. Mm. So that the Father could use him however he chose. So here's Jesus saying, my soul is troubled. What, what do you think his soul is troubled about? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Why is his soul troubled? Is it mm -hmm. because the time he's in? Mm. Is it because evil is about to reign? Mm. Are are our souls troubled because mm. the virus is around? Mm. Or is our souls troubled for a different cause? Mm. 
So here in Hebrews chapter chapter um, 5 and verse 12, I want to say. I think I lost my mm-hmm. verse. I apologize. Here, let's go to verse 7. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. It says in the Amplified Bible, mm-hmm. In the days of his flesh, Jesus mm-hmm. offered definite and special petitions for that which he want, not only wanted but needed. The supplications were strong crying and tears to him who could always and was able to save him out from death. Mm-hmm. And he was heard because of his reverence towards God. Imagine that. Jesus' reverence towards the Father. <laughs> mm-hmm. Knowing that God was the one who was taking care of his life in every portion of it. Mm-hmm. And so it says <sighs> that he prayed to him who was able to save him out from death. And he was heard because of his reverence towards the Father of his godly fear and of his piety, in that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. So we go back to John chapter 12, verse 27. Here's where we find what the trouble of the Lord was, Mm -hmm. of Jesus. He was not wanting to go out of the presence of the Father. Of course. Because if we find out that the chastisement of our peace that was upon him, Mm. (laughs) the chastisement in Hebrew means to be separated away from. That's right. And so if... If Jesus was had to be chastised for us, taken out of God's presence, just like Satan was cast out of God's presence, Adam was taken out of the garden and out of God's presence in the wholeness of God's presence, Jesus had to be taken out of God's presence for our peace. Mm-hmm. So the, when Jesus says, now my soul is troubled, mm-hmm. the trouble was not the pain and the suffering was about to go through. It was the fact that because of the sin that was about to go on him, that would cause separation from the Absolutely. Father. Because he understood that without the Father, yeah. you know, that darkness, <laughs> which is really separation from That's God, right, yeah. is the worst thing that can happen, not only to him, but to every human being. being. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like he, he was afraid of the nails that would be painful to him. He he knew that the sin that was about to be put on him on the cross was about to bring separation yeah. from the Father because that's what the, that's what the Bible says about sin. That's right. It separates it, it us. separates us from the presence of God. This is it, it, it's so profound. Yes. You know, and, <laughs> and what I love about this, how Jesus said, "So what should I say? I'm about to be separated." <laughs> From the presence of God. My soul is so troubled. Mm -hmm. You know, what should I say? He came to a point at the cross and he said, don't you understand that I could call legions of angels to come and save you? That's right. That's right. He had the power to change this. That's right. And he said, no, I I submit to it because if he wouldn't submit to this, you and I couldn't be here to chat. That's right. Because that's what he said. Nobody is taking this life away from me. I laid it down freely and freely I can take it back up. Isaiah 50 verse 6 says, I gave my back Mm. to those that struck me. Mm -hmm. If you could imagine the cat of nine tails and what it was going to do to his back with 39 lashes, with all of the metal and the glass that was in the whip when it pulled the skin off his back and he said i gave my back mm. i chose he gave to do his this. back he for chose for, for me he chose to do it That's now right. i want to encourage somebody whose heart is troubled <clears throat> uh, you may not be troubled because you are away from god you may be troubled because there is situations in your life that's troubling you uh, especially in this season you might be out of work and that can be very troubling You may be in pain, you may be suffering, you may be in grief that can cause your soul to trouble. I want to encourage you today uh, because of what Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. There's always even a way out, even through this situation where we get overwhelmed in pain and we suffer through what things comes in our lives. How can you, what can you say to that person whose soul is really troubled? And with good reason, humanly speaking. Right. And, and that's what the issue is, mm-hmm. is by if we're humanly speaking. Mm-hmm. So humanly speaking, 
Because, I'm because we still live in this body. We still have the emotion, the pain, and the struggle. We get affected by things that comes our way. So we do struggle. And it takes a process yes. to get to that place where we can fully trust God. Even in that, we right. can still be in pain and struggle. Right. Yes. If, if we come to the place, this is, this is what reconciliation is all mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. The reconciliation of God is to take us from the position that we were in, mm -hmm. in the trouble of the world, mm -hmm. to bring us into God himself ministering through us. That's right. <laughs> because the ultimate end is ministering through us. Mm -hmm. If we looked at the trouble mm -hmm. of the inner court, mm -hmm. of the temple, we, we would look at the trouble of the sacrifice that was happening. Mm -hmm. But if we looked at the glory of what was happening mm -hmm. to it, that it was eliminating our sin, mm -hmm. we can get to go into the next room in the temple, which is in the inner court, mm -hmm. where the peace, and we're made one with the bread, and there's the candelabra, the seven-headed candle. That's right. And the altar of incense. And that candle that's in there is explained in Revelations as Christ, the head of the church. Mm -hmm. And so if we've come through the part that was the hardest, <laughs> mm -hmm. that we sacrifice our own lives, mm -hmm. that we throw away what we consider to be trouble and grab on to the peace that is in Him. Mm. And we take that into the Holy of Holies. That's our worship. Mm. Our worship is no longer a song, but mm -hmm. it's our lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when we allow the Word of God of what happens in the outer court to bring us into the inner court, inner court with the coal and the incense, mm. we can go in there and now we have a revelation of Christ, the candle, the head of the church. Mm -hmm. so, bringing us so when you go through trouble, you need to go to God in worship and adoration so that he can infuse you with his peace. That's right. He can infuse you with hope. You know, Jesus spoke to us through the gospel and he said in this life, you will have trials and tribulation. But at the same time, he says, be of good cheer. Because I have overcome. Yeah. So meaning what? There's no trial. There's no trouble. That's too big for God. Right. To take you off or to give you the strength to go through and overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if you are here and you, you, are, you, are, you are struggling, I want to encourage you. You will overcome. Mm -hmm. God's grace is available. Yeah. God's strength is available for you. I want to encourage you even to open your heart and to let the Spirit of God to come and comfort you, the Spirit of peace to come and comfort you because God did not take us out of this world, but He has given us what we need to live and to be overcomers in this world. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged. All right, so let's mm -hmm. keep on. Mm -hmm. So the way mm -hmm. that we are going to come into what Christ has for mm -hmm. us to come into this peace is to take his yoke upon mm, us. Mm -hmm. His yoke was to deliver us. Mm -hmm. His yoke was the love of God. Mm. That he came to do the will of God, so he was tied to, tied in the will of God, which was his love that he sent him. Mm -hmm. And so what a hardship would it be for Jesus who considered not his own flesh. Mm -hmm. What about Paul, who didn't consider mm -hmm. his own flesh? What about mm -hmm. Stephen, who didn't consider mm -hmm. his own flesh? What about Peter? Mm -hmm. So Jesus is coming to bring us, and especially in this time mm -hmm. now that we're in, mm -hmm. is to be able for us to see the fact of what's in us that speaks louder than what his yoke does. Mm -hmm. And so, like we said in the very first class, or first mm -hmm. Wednesday night, the object of the time mm -hmm. that we're in is not about a judgment because the judgment's already gone. It's mm -hmm. already been taken care of. Now the thing is, is what will we live in, mm -hmm. in our, of ourselves? What we will allow to come out of ourselves? Mm -hmm. If I was one that said beforehand, and if maybe I was speaking and I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. And then I find myself sitting at home afraid to go out uh, or to every sign that says about the coronavirus was the truth in me about greater than 
mm-hmm. who was in me, mm-hmm. d- which area do I surrender myself to? Mm-hmm. Because no matter which way I go, I'm a slave to something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I would rather be a slave to the will of God, which is mm-hmm. his love. So Jesus was a slave to the will of God. You know, I love this Bible verse in John 12, 27. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we're going to even come <laughs> out of it today. <laughs> so it says, you know, Jesus said, now my soul is troubled. Now what should I say? You know, uh, Father, deliver me from this. And he said, no. It, w- it is for this reason I came to this hour. Mm-hmm. So the beautiful thing about Jesus, he understood every pain, every struggle he was going through was the will of God. Yeah. So now, could it be that mm-hmm. some of our soul being troubled because we are not understanding that where we are at could be the will of God? Right. Then we ask God to remove us from a place where he wants us to stay. That's right. Absolutely. Because he wants yes. us to go through whatever it is. To the end. To the end, because it is the will of God. Yes. You know, sometimes we go through hardship and we are crying, God, take me out of this. I believe, like Jesus said, you know, should I ask the Father to remove me, <laughs> to save me from this hour? And he said, no, I can't. It doesn't matter how painful, how the separation will be, how hard mm-hmm. the darkness will be. I have to be in this because for this very reason, yes. I have come into yes. this world. So now, you know, that's a question we need to ask ourselves. I've seen all of us, all of us sometimes, we go through that, through situation, and instead of asking God, God, is this you? Yeah. <laughs> because if you ask, he'll say, yes, it's me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we say, God, take me out of this. It's yes. too hard. Yeah. It's too painful. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to be without the job that I want. I don't want to go to church and listen to the word of God for hours. I don't want to pray for hours. Yeah. Take me out of it. But we should be like Jesus. Say, no, no, no. no. I know this is going to be hard. I know this is going to, you know, me- mess up my whole life because I'm going to be separated from the presence of God. But yet, I cannot pray for God to take me out of this. Because that's the very reason I came. Right. To die, to be separated from God, so that the sin of humanity can come upon me. Yes. So that I can set them free. That's what Jesus always says, you know, for the joy that was Mm -hmm. set Set before before him, he endured. (laughs) Every struggle, every every suffering, every pain, every disappointment, (laughs) every hardship. And I wanna encourage you today. You know, sometimes, you know, when I go through things, the first question I ask God is, God, is this you? Because when I know it's him, then I know what to pray. If it's painful and I feel in my heart the peace of God, I know maybe God wants me to stay in this. Mm -hmm. Then I say, God, give me the grace to handle. Give me the grace to overcome. No, God, take me out of this. I don't want it. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. It's too painful. It's not everything that's hard and struggle and painful doesn't mean it's not the will of God for your life. Absolutely. You know? There's two different scenarios here. Mm -hmm. Jesus, when he prayed his prayer and his struggle, Mm -hmm was to not have to go into the separation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Our struggle Mm -hmm. and our pain that Mm -hmm. we have is letting go of the flesh. Letting go of the flesh. Jesus, his struggle Mm -hmm. was so great Mm -hmm. that he was sweating blood. Mm -hmm. And all of what he was going through, but he said, still, I've got to go, like you said, about Mm -hmm. the joy. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine now us coming to this idea Mm -hmm. of saying, my struggle is to get rid of the flesh, those mm. things that ail me to come into the peace that he mm. brought for me mm-hmm. and not deny his work mm. that it allows me to change mm-hmm. to come into his peace. Mm. So what ailed him to be taken out of the presence of God, mm. those things try to stop me from entering into his presence. <laughs> mm. And so mm. now we should enter in, That's right. whether it's a struggle or not. Mm-hmm. Look at the glory that's ahead mm, of us. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. And then he says, you know, when you're going through a struggle, you know, when your soul is troubled, and that's when Jesus says in Matthew 11, take my yoke upon me. Mm-hmm. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you in pain? Are you suffering? Take my yoke mm-hmm. upon me. What it's does that you. truly mean? Yeah. Let's look at the word take. Uh-huh. Take, yes. <laughs> so it, it just starting off small. 
Uh-huh. You say <clears throat> you've performed marriages. Mm-hmm. Husband, do you take this wife? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wife, do you take this husband? When they take each other and lawfully come into the position of marriage, mm-hmm. is what he's saying, take my yoke upon you. Mm. He's saying, come mm. and be married to me. Mm. So it's a covenant. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. It, it, and it's a covenant, uh-huh. but it's more than this. He's saying, abide in me totally. Mm. Mm. Be well, one with me. That's right. Well, mm. I go through this pain, I'm mm-hmm. going to carry you through it because ah. I am married to you. <laughs> this is so profound. I need you to yeah. go back to it and mm. say it slowly so that we can understand. So when he says... Come to me, all of you who are weary and tired, tired, and I'll give you rest. And he said, take my yoke yeah. upon you. So that word take is the same word as, as being married, married. to. Ah, Jesus. Are you guys hearing what I'm hearing? Because <laughs> I'm hearing something deeper. Yeah. Uh-huh. Being married to, uh-huh. I like this part, uh-huh. is because... When you stood before that couple that was getting mm-hmm. married, mm-hmm. did you say, is somebody forcing you to do this? Mm. Or did you make a choice? Mm. So he's saying, take my yoke mm-hmm. upon you, mm-hmm. your choice. <laughs> to take it. To take it. Do you want to marry me, he's saying? Mm-hmm. Will you marry me? Mm. He's saying to you, I'll show you my way of doing what I have to do with you by That's marrying right. you. That's right. Because you are the low person on the totem pole and mm-hmm. he's the king and he's saying i'm still mm-hmm. going to marry you mm-hmm. in your lowest form mm-hmm. will you take me will mm-hmm. you have the rights that i have <laughs> mm-hmm. by doing this and he being a joint heir with the father was saying i'm bringing you into the heirloom of my father mm-hmm. i'm bringing you to what my father has not just what i have mm-hmm. but all things that the father has are mine and you being married to me i'm giving to you Mm. And this mm. is the beginning part of salvation. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Come and be not in his trouble for his soul, but like Paul said, we are joint heirs in his suffering. Mm-hmm. But you want to understand, he wasn't saying to you, mm-hmm. I want you to go and suffer. Mm. He wants you to be married to his ah, suffering. Cha, ta, ta, ta. And if you're married to his suffering, now you have the freedom mm. of the marriage mm. of the resurrection. <laughs> mm. You have to say that again yeah. because this is so profound. So, yeah, mm. when we take Christ upon ourselves, mm-hmm. we're taking all that he accomplished. What he has accomplished. All that he's accomplished. So we get united to him. We become like in a marriage co- covenant, one with him. One. So whatever he has accomplished, it's, it's yours. It's yours. And, and when he accomplished your freedom, mm-hmm. he brought you into it. He carried us inside him while he was nailed on the cross. That's right. That's right. That's right. And when he raised from the dead, it was because he eliminated those things that ailed us. That's right. In order to marry us that's into right. the resurrection. That's right. That's so beautiful. So now when he says, for my yoke is easy, it's wholesome. What is he trying to explain to us? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My yoke is easy. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the This last is so here. profound. I hope you, you guys are hearing what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. We will never have rest for our souls mm-hmm. unless we first of all take. Take. <laughs> and, and just understand take. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that I did it mm-hmm. on here. I, we'd have to go to Song of Solomon chapter 8. Mm-hmm. I love Song of Solomon. Mm-hmm. It says that even through fire Mm -hmm. and through high waters and torturous things, that the love of God is so great Mm -hmm. on Christ that he went through that torture for our sake because of the fact of the love. And it says that it won't even appear like a sacrifice to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be a like you said, the fire is funny, the yoke is easy.
No, now we're good. Okay. I uh, think now we're good. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, are we good now? Sounds, the sound is gone. <laughs> Hello, so can, can you, you hear us? us no, they should be able to hear us now. Okay. I just got a text. Check, not, check, not check, yet, check, check, says. check, not check. Yet. Can you do check, check, check on yours? Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Can you hear check. us? Static. Static the must be my phone. Talk. Praise the Lord. It's, it's good. It's good now, she says. Okay. The static is my phone and, and my uh, jewelry. So it's all good. Thank you, guys. Okay. So as we were talking about taking... I'm just going to remove this to make it easy for the static. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just go ahead. Talk about As we were talking about take my yoke, mm -hmm. take it. Mm -hmm. There was a preacher one time, and um, he was caught up in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And while he was caught up in the spirit and talking with Jesus, in between him and Jesus, um, a demon showed up. Mm -hmm. And this pastor is a big pastor. Mm -hmm. And he said to Jesus, do something about this. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, no, you do something. Mm. And he said, what should I do? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, take the sword, being the word of God, but the sword of the spirit. And so this preacher reached up to grab the sword that he saw. Mm -hmm. He was on his face asking God to get rid of this demon. When he, pull, when he went and grabbed the sword, because he was going to pull it to himself to fight, he couldn't pull the sword to himself. The sword picked him up. Mm. <laughs> Mm. The sword picked him up with its own power. Mm -hmm. And so when we take this on, now we're coming into the power of Christ instead of what we have as our own. Amen. And so he makes it easy for us because he endows us with the power mm. or we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit for no reason at all. That's right. Because we've been given this power, which is the love of God that the Holy Spirit shed abroad in us, now will compel us to walk into the benefits of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. So the, the second word being my, <laughs> my yoke. Whose mm. yoke? Mm. So he's talking about the purpose of God, the redemption plan of God. So Jesus was tied to God's yoke, mm -hmm. not his own yoke, because he said that whatever I do, I see my father doing. Mm -hmm. And so he said to the people, my yoke, because he was yoked with the Father. That's right. If I'm yoked, my wife and I, we have one word. Mm. <laughs> because we've made the decision through marriage to be equally one. That's right. And to be one, we have the same voice. Mm. And so to walk in the same voice, her and I together are strong in that voice. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the power of our marriage. <laughs> That's right. And so because we love each other, We'll surrender to each other and submit to each other because it's the purpose of the plan that we have that f fulfills the marriage. That's right. Excuse me, I have to fix mm -hmm. it a little bit. Okay, go on. Yep. I hear, I listen. And so if we went through Romans, all of Romans chapter mm -hmm. 7, it says, you know, at the beginning of it, it says that if a woman... If a woman is married to a man and he dies, she's freed from that married. That's right. But you know what a greater form he goes on and talks about? What happens if the woman dies? Mm. Now she's free from everything in life. But when she's resurrected now, she's married to someone who is greater. Mm -hmm. So Satan can't even touch us now mm -hmm. because of the fact that we were dead. That's right. <laughs> and we've been made alive into this new marriage of mm -hmm. choice by taking him as our husband. Mm -hmm. We are the bride of Christ. One time I had this little thing, you know, I was a bad guy because I used to say, oh, the church this and oh, the church does that. Mm. And I would complain about the church. Mm -hmm. And You were a Christian. I was a Christian. Uh -huh. And I would complain about the church. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came and spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And he said, be careful about how you talk about my bride. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was a rebuke that still stands in me. Uh -huh. I can't speak wrong about somebody to judge somebody in any fashion because I understand that they and you are the bride of Christ. Mm. How can I speak against you? Somebody mm. Jesus died for. That's right. So part of my maturing is taking you on mm -hmm. as part the portion of me as the bride of Christ. Now I have to be one with you mm -hmm. so to the point that I understand Christ in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's and you're married beautiful. to him. That's beautiful. So we are, we're not, we're, we're, we're free. And the hardest part that I find that we have to walk through and learn how to walk through is past the point of our mind that when something comes up and starts tapping on us on the shoulder, we don't agree with it to say, oh, you know, I feel this way. Mm. That we can distinguish something else and know and to have discernment to know right away mm. that that's the spirit of the, the world, the mm -hmm. spirit of Satan trying to cause us to be influenced by something else. Mm. If I'm to turn the other cheek, the other cheek isn't turned just because you slapped me. Mm -hmm. The turn of the cheek is because maybe you insulted me. Mm. But maybe you didn't even insult me. Mm -hmm. Maybe you said something and you were having kind of an issue with your day and you were a little bit hard or sharp and it felt like I was stabbed. I go to myself now and I look at what's in me that would cause me to feel that way mm. and not at you mm -hmm. to say, why would you speak to me that mm. way? Mm. Who am I to put a judgment on you, but to turn and ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, something in me is bugging me. Please let's work on me to get rid of this part because your life is solely before him by yourself. Yeah, and, and I find that's one of the, the hardest thing for, for us to do human. When something is done to us, however it is, the first instant is to bring a judgment. Mm -hmm. But like you say, we should go in ourselves with the Holy Spirit and ask God, why is this bothering me? <laughs> what is it about me yeah. that when somebody, this person does this or this person says this, instead of judging that person, say, why am I <laughs> acting, why am I reacting that's that way responding to it yeah. responding to it yeah. and then then god can show you <laughs> you know because mm -hmm. god wants us to go into a place of maturity absolutely as christian mm -hmm. but we get focused sometime at what was done to me yeah. what wasn't done to me yeah. you know mm -hmm. uh and then i remember when i just got born again and I, i'm so grateful to god because he gave me that revelation mm -hmm. even when somebody did something wrong to me and it hurt yeah. the first instant for me was never to go judge you did this you did this it was always go to god yeah. say god this person hurt me this person offended me and the first thing i'll tell to god please heal my heart right you know take away the the hurt the offense out of me right because i understood that god want us to to mature and to walk like him that's right yeah. you see so <laughs> as christian sometimes we need to refocus on what matters not what was done to us or what was not done to us uh, the focus on to even through this situation am i becoming like jesus it's an opportunity mm -hmm. to right. walk in the love of god absolutely you know what that i'm saying is, so yeah. i remember when i was young there's this woman in my church i mean there was something about it <laughs> about her that bothered me Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and you know what? She wasn't nice. I understand. She wasn't nice. And, but there was something about her that, that bothered me. And s one day she said something to me that hurt me, mm -hmm. really hurt me. Anyway, I went to God. I said, God, you need to take this away from me. And mm -hmm. I felt God gave me a revelation. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, sometimes just people just get on your nerves and you just, ah. <laughs> and but yet they are around you god wants you to do life with them mm -hmm. right anyway so god gave me this revelation the revelation was bless her mm -hmm. bless her mm -hmm. don't worry about how she's behaving how she's acting mm -hmm. let what she's done to you turn it into something else right. bless her so i went i remember when i bought her a big gift because she was about to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So I bought her those big saucer where baby goes in and jump and jump. Yeah. And when I gave her the gift, did I want? No. Was she somebody I would like to give a gift to? No. But when I gave her the gift, something inside of me shifted. Mm -hmm. My love, my compassion <laughs> became towards her. It wasn't mm -hmm. anymore about she heard you, she's mean, I yeah. don't like how she's behaved. But by giving of myself, something mm -hmm. that is precious to me, yeah. it changed my heart yeah. and from that day on carry my kid mm -hmm. it didn't matter what she did it didn't bother me <laughs> that's right you grew i grew <laughs> i mature in love right, yeah. because now i was walking out of the love of god 
Mm-hmm. You see what I'm the saying? The love of God compelled you. And yes, it <laughs> compelled me. And uh, and I think that's how even God, how many things we do mm. against God and oh, His yeah. love for yeah. us uh, compels uh, Him to keep doing good to us. I watched Peter one time, mm-hmm. Peter in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And he said to Jesus, you know, how many times should I forgive my brother if he mm-hmm. offends me or mm-hmm. does something against me? And Jesus responded to him after he said, should I do it seven times? Jesus said, no, mm-hmm. 70 times seven. seven. Mm-hmm. It's only a number. Mm-hmm. He was telling him, Peter's going, what? That many times? Mm-hmm. In a day. In a day. Mm-hmm. And so I looked at it and considered it for a long time. And you know what? The Lord started speaking mm. to me. Mm. He said, Carrie, how many times am I forgiving you a day? Mm. <laughs> if, if, if I am given mercy mm-hmm. every morning, mm-hmm. I require mercy every morning mm-hmm. because he, I have to walk in a place that he has to forgive me more than what a man could mm-hmm. every single day. But then he applies mercy to me so that I can walk in the mercy towards those mm-hmm. who now are sinning against That's me. That's right. Because I walk in the fact that he forgives me That's so right. I can forgive them. That's right. That's beautiful. Yeah. So now me, what I do, I want to encourage somebody. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody just gets on your nerve or whatever, what I do, I bless them. Because mm-hmm. I found that was the solution. I gave something that cost me to them. And when I do, it changes my yeah. whole heart and my whole perspective towards mm-hmm. them and then right. i'm growing in maturity and acting like christ yes you know i love what jesus said at the christ he said father forgive them because they don't know what they are doing do you know when he forgave them uh-huh he waited mm-hmm. until the very last thing could be thrown at him mm. he was quick to forgive mm-hmm. but he waited until the last thing mm. could be put on him mm. and then he said father forgive, forgive them. them because for him it had to be all of it. Yeah, all of it. All of it. <laughs> yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Is there another insult you can throw? Mm-hmm. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Do it so that I can carry it away from you and you can be free from it. Mm. That's beautiful. That's who this Jesus is. <laughs> this is the, and he wants us to take his yoke. That's yes. easy. This is, be yoked to this. Be yoked together. Mm-hmm. Being in that covenant and you're going to yeah. start walking mm-hmm. like him. That's right. Yeah, that's powerful. First Peter talks about it. First mm. Peter chapter 2. Mm. He says, do you know that if we don't walk in this place, mm-hmm. we're still drinking milk. Mm. So we don't understand the ingredients of milk. Mm. If we don't know how to, he said that even if you're a slave mm. and your master beats you for no good reason, mm-hmm. he said, take this for the glory of God. Mm. He said, if you were beat for a reason, then that's acceptable because you were beat for a reason. Mm-hmm. But he said, if if you're not beat, this is what turning the other cheek is. Mm-hmm. With your whole life, if an offense comes, mm-hmm. you're turning the other cheek so it slides past you and you're giving the other cheek so that now it has to look at you and say, mm-hmm. well, why would you do that? Now you have the opportunity for the glory of God to minister to that person. Mm, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. That's where I live mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I've had to struggle with myself, struggle, struggle, struggle. Mm. And um, I said to the Lord, you know, why do I act this way? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why, why do I do it? So we'll go back to, you know, um, Romans chapter mm. 7 again, mm-hmm. 5, whatever it is, where, O oh, wretched man. That I am. Mm-hmm. When I saw myself as being a wretched man, mm. I came, I had to come out of the condemnation towards myself. Mm. Why do I do this? Why do I do this? Why do I do this? Until the place that the Holy Spirit started showing me, he said, Carrie, you know, mm. when somebody else bothers you, mm. you s- assume that they're bothering you, mm. but it's something in you that's being bothered mm. by them. Mm-hmm. Something s- in you that is being bothered. That shouldn't be there. That's right. Mm. He said, this, the way that the Lord brought it to me, mm-hmm. because he sometimes speaks to me very strong, mm. he put his finger in my face and said, hey, hypocrite. Mm. <laughs> and once I got it after he told me that twice, mm. he had to speak to me more than once because I need sometimes more than once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he spoke to me uh-huh. and he said, hey, hypocrite. Mm. And so the second time that he said it to me, I said, Lord, please send me an entrepreneur that knows how to work with wood mm-hmm. because the timbers are coming out of my eye. Mm. He said, hey, hypocrite, first of all, remove the timber that's in your own mm-hmm. eye so that you can, can see clearly, see mm. so then you can 
help your brother with the sliver that's in his. Mm. Do you know how merciful this God is? That if I've beat you constantly with the timber in my eye because I couldn't see what I was doing, that when I come to the place of being healed, he's saying to me, Carrie, now I want to use you to help someone else that has a lesser problem. <laughs> that's right. But if the sliver is in my eye, it's the part of me that's being bothered by somebody else because mm -hmm. it's always irritating me. Mm -hmm. So I can't say, hey, you got something in your eye and it's irritating me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can only be bothered by what irritates me. That's right. So that's why he said, I want you to look inside your own heart so that we can take the slivers out. That's right. And that's so right. he started showing me a wine vat. Okay, that's go right. ahead. Sorry. And then because you would have compassion. Yes. You, because you, you were able, God was able to, you know, restore you. Then you can even remove the little stick in mm -hmm. somebody's eyes with so much compassion, mm -hmm. not with so much judgment. That's right. You know? <clears throat> so he started showing me a wine vat. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so if you understand a wine vat, the wine is settling mm -hmm. in and kept in a vat. Mm -hmm. And all the sediment goes to the goes bottom, down. stuff mm -hmm. that you wouldn't want to drink. Mm. And all the dross rises up to mm -hmm. the top. Mm -hmm. But you know where the tap is? It's in the belly. Mm. It's in the middle. <laughs> mm. So the good wine is pouring out. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. Mm -hmm. But he started showing me, you know, he would say to me, Carrie, the things that you see as a problem in somebody else mm. are the things that are irritating the sliver that's in your own eye. Mm -hmm. He said, so don't be consider, consider deep things at the moment. He said, just start looking mm. at the sliver that's there is the dross that's on the top, the thing that you constantly see. Mm. Mm. That's the thing that you need to have removed mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. you. So the wine is, the, the dross is constantly be taken off the top. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that you see in yourself or what you see in others is really the thing that bothers you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can have it removed so the wine is being more purified. Mm -hmm. But when you're moved into the second vat, the new wine skin, all the sediment that was in the bottom is now useless. It's no more because it can be cleaned out of that old wine vat. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a new wine skin. Mm -hmm. And in this new wineskin is love and compassion, mm, just like you said. Love and compassion. Mm -hmm. Love and compassion. Because I've become free mm -hmm. from myself. <laughs> yes, and y y you are free from self-righteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. by looking inside, like Paul said, all oh, wretched men that I am, mm -hmm. which I believe it's the closer you get, you get to God, mm -hmm. the more the revelation of how wretched you are, mm -hmm. you know, because you see your imperfection as you get closer to God yeah. and you become more free. And from that place of freedom from self-righteousness, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. then you can truly minister with compassion mm -hmm. and you understand it's really not so much about the bigness or the strength of a sin. It's really yeah. a matter of Holiness, holiness versus sin. Yeah. It's not about of how much this one sin, how much this one nope. sin. And not even what type. That's right. Yeah, because if Christ worried about the type or mm. what type of sin it was, we wouldn't have never been saved. That's right. But the love of God was greater than the sin because mm -hmm. that's why the Bible says that love overcomes sin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. It, it covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And so if love covers a multitude of sins, he's talking about you and me mm -hmm. now in this place that we've come to rise to somewhat of maturity. Mm -hmm. That I, I would love you greater than what you offended mm -hmm. me with. Mm -hmm. And I, I would only be able to mm -hmm. give you reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That no matter what you did to me, I would still want to reconcile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would do everything in my life to live in a reconciled form to you constantly. Mm -hmm. That's turning the other cheek. That's right. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. God is good. Now, um, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we almost uh, passed our time. Uh, you know, the one thing I felt like God for today for this Bible study mm -hmm. was that place of offense, for sure, where we need to remove our eyes for, from those who offended us mm -hmm. to what is it about us? you know, that's being stirred up, that God would want us to remove, uh, to let the love of God come and overwhelm and feel. Yeah. So 
what what the last few words you could tell somebody who's who's been offended or hurt yeah. by somebody else regardless of the reason yeah. you know you you are bothered inside and you are not able able to overcome mm -hmm. how would how can the love of god come and remove that from them yeah by saying to you first you are able to overcome mm -hmm. there's nothing that you can't overcome because of the fact that it's Christ in you. That's right. Your hope of glory. Mm. I, I, I might struggle and think that I can't overcome. It might be overbearing mm -hmm. to me, but you know, Deuteronomy chapter 28 says, these blessings will come upon you and mm -hmm. overtake you. Mm -hmm. So be overtaken first of all by the love of God mm -hmm. so that you can love yourself. Mm. I want you to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Come to the love of God that he, you understand that this guy Jesus died for you personally, mm -hmm. that he made this, cho this mm -hmm. <laughs> choice to be yoked to you. He, he kept this yoke open for you to come into it with mm -hmm. him so that you could be free. Mm -hmm. So come into this freedom first for yourself mm -hmm. so that now you can live, so that you're able to forgive others. That's right. Love will change you if you come to love yourself. Mm. If you come to the rest, R-E-S-T, mm -hmm. in Christ, it's because you've rested in the fact that He's forgiven you, mm. He's healed you, mm -hmm. He's delivered you. The whole world, word of salvation mm -hmm. is in you and upon you, and Christ delivered that to you by His own self. Mm. And so if you live in this salvation and come to the knowledge of mm. it, which mm. we'll get into a little bit more as we go on, You'll see this greatness of this Lord. Mm. How will we not want to surrender to Him? Mm. The disciples, you know, here's um, the disciples. They they saw Jesus after He rose from the dead, and mm. they were in a room with locked doors, afraid mm -hmm. of what was going to happen. And Jesus came into the room, and He showed them His hands and His side. Thomas wasn't there, mm. and when Thomas wasn't there. The next time that he came so many days later, Thomas was with the disciples the second time. Now, I want to tell you about Peter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter comes to Thomas and says, you know what? Jesus came and we saw the holes That's in his right. head. We saw we this. Saw this. And this. Thomas says, you know what? If I don't see the holes mm -hmm. and I don't see his hands, I won't believe either. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus came, he said to Thomas, put your hands here. Mm -hmm. Put your hands here. Put them here. Mm -hmm. Jesus scared away doubt. Mm. by saying, come and do this. Jesus defeated doubt in Thomas by saying, put your hand mm -hmm. in the holes here and in my side. And then you know what happened to Thomas? Mm -hmm. He said, surely you're the son of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so whatever has offended you, mm -hmm. whatever you've been offended by, mm -hmm. whatever ails you, mm -hmm. come and put your hand in the hole. Mm. This side of the hand was for the abused. This side of the hand was for those to come. Mm. And so both the abused and the abuser got mm. the same treatment from Christ. Mm. The hole went right through his hand for mm. us. Mm. So if they've abused you, they're forgiven. Mm. If you've been abused, you have healing. Mm. So come to the hand. <laughs> mm. Come to the hand. Mm -hmm. Come to the hand. Today I mm. want to invite you as we close to come to the hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus says, come to me, all of mm -hmm. you who are tired. Uh, you know, God is calling you again to bring that area in your heart, in your life where uh, you are tired mm -hmm. and troubled and uh, you don't seem to overcome. God is calling you to bring that area and uh, to be yoked with him mm -hmm. and uh, receive his freedom so that you can you can freely be free. Mm -hmm. Father God, we give you praise for yes, each person Lord. today. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father God. And if you are here praise and you are struggling and you're feeling like there's, you need forgiveness, <laughs> but for <laughs> some reason you feel guilty by whatever it is that you have done, you think is wrong. God has forgiven you. Absolutely. He has forgiven you regardless. Uh, I want you to come into that place of rest, mm -hmm. free from guilt and condemnation. I would like you pray yep. for those two people who've been hurt and wounded mm -hmm. and they need God comforting power to come and uh, overwhelm them. And yep. those who, yep. you know, who feel guilty, 
because yeah. what they've done wrong yeah. and they can't seem to overcome that. Absolutely. That the love of God will mm -hmm. just shine through in those two areas and yeah. bring them freedom. Thanks Thank for coming Lord. and listening so that we can minister to you. We appreciate you. You know, in Isaiah 53, it says that even the results of our sin is taken care of in Christ. Mm, mm, mm. So you have no guilt. Mm, mm. The result mm, mm. is is taken care of, mm. taken care of by Christ. Mm. He didn't leave you in a portion. Mm -hmm. He took all of it away, mm. all of it, Thank you, every Lord. single part. So, Father, mm. I pray for these people who are in between of their understanding mm. that you would bring light to them mm. in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, thank you for your healing. Mm. I pray for their hearts. I pray for your healing. So I'm saying to you, be healed in mm. Jesus' name. Mm. Be healed in Jesus' mm. name. Mm. Be healed in Jesus' name. Being healed, yes, Lord. Be healed in Jesus' name. He loves you. Mm. You're not guilty in front of him. Mm. All he has is open arms like the prodigal son that came home. Mm. The Father is dressing you in fine clothes, mm. new sandals and his ring. He's putting on you. Mm. There's nothing in you that he does not desire. Mm. Mm. He desired everything about you. And he took the sin mm. because of the desire of you being free. Mm. And so his love could come and touch you is why he took that sin. Mm. So let this love come and touch you. You're free from sin. Mm. You're free. Amen. You're free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It was an amazing time again. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. uh, Carrie Mackey. So we'll it. see you next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, today I want to encourage you. I want you to deep, deep in the love of God. Uh, deep, deep in the love of God. Where, you know, the love of God has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with His love. Mm -hmm. You know, just see yourself in a pool or a sea of love and just <laughs> jump in. Yeah. The love of God will overwhelm you and overcome you. That's my prayer, my wish mm. for you. That you will just, you know, just jump, jump and plunge into the love of God and let Him overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. Even through decision, let the love of God overwhelm you. Absolutely. He loves you not because of you. He loves you because He is love. He mm -hmm. cannot not love. Absolutely. Love is who He is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you are feeling afraid to come to God, do not be afraid to come to love mm -hmm. because love does not judge. Love mm -hmm. welcomes yeah. all things. Love forgives all all things. This is Jesus. Yeah. He is love. Come close yeah. to him and he'll give you the rest that you need for this season. Absolutely. We love you so much. Yeah. God bless you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will see you next Wednesday for our Bible study. Yes. Thank you so Thank much, Kerry Mark. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>